Hi, I'm going to talk about decision analysis today. But before getting into that, I want to talk about limitations of linear programming. We learned about linear programming in the last module. It's a great tool when you have all of the input parameters ready. But the problem is, it's not a very good tool when it comes to uncertainty. Let me give you an example. Let's say there's a casino with a game. If you want to play the game, you need to pay $60 as an admission. If you pay the $60 and play the game, then you will take a coin and toss it. If it shows head, then what you will do is take the coin again and toss it. If it shows head in the second toss, you get $20 back. If it shows tail in the second toss, you get $120 back. And the game ends. But if in the first toss it shows tail, then you can decide to walk away with $20 back or you can toss the coin again. If you choose to toss the coin again and it shows head, you get $10 back. If it shows tail, you get $60 back and the game ends. Question is, should you play this game at all? Now. Can you answer this question with linear programming? The answer is not. As you can see, there are uncertainties and some of the decisions depends on the uncertainty of earlier stage. For example, in the fourth step, the decision to walk away or toss a coin again depends on the outcome of the second step. In this kind of situation, Linear programming cannot help you, but decision analysis can. So what is decision analysis after all? Decision analysis is a tool that helps you identify the best course of action when there is uncertainty or when there are sequential events or decisions that unfold over time. It's a tool that helps you identify the good decisions, but importantly, Having a good decision does not necessarily guarantee to have a good outcome. Now let me give you an example. Let's say you're flipping a coin. The coin shows head and tail with equal likelihood. You get $1 if it shows head and you get $3 if it shows tail. Question is, what is the expected value of the amount you will get from tossing this coin? Well, from basic probability, I can draw a graph like this. The circle represent the uncertainty. Well, in this case, that's the outcome of tossing a coin. There are two branches out of this circle, each represent a possible outcome. The upper one represents head, the lower one is tail. The number here, these are the probabilities of each outcome. And the numbers here are the payoff, which is simply the reward you will get. So what's the expected value of the amount you will get? Well, you simply take the, uh, the weighted average of the outcomes. So 0.5 probability times $1 plus 0.5 probabilities times $3. That will give you $2. So that means the expected value is $2 when you play the game. So what does that mean? It means that if you flip the coin many, many, many times, then the average amount you will get per flip will be very close to two dollars it doesn't mean that you will get two dollars every time sometimes you get more sometimes you get less but on average you'll be very close to two dollars every time so expected value is an estimate of the so-called long-run average of the outcome now let me ask you Suppose you are asked to pay $1.5 before playing the game. Should you play the game at all? You probably will say yes, because the reward is $2, the cost is only $1.5, so I'll make a profit out of it. Okay, I agree with that answer, but does that mean that you will make a profit every time you play? No, sometimes you get only $1 and you make a loss. Sometimes you will get $3 and you make a profit. But in the long run, you should make a profit on average. 
precisely speaking, what we're saying is that if you play this game many, many times, you will on average earn $0.5 every time you play. But sometimes you make a profit, sometimes you make a loss. Nevertheless, playing this game is a good decision. And therefore, making a good decision here does not imply that you will necessarily have a good outcome, which means that you make a profit. Sometimes you make a good decision to play, but you can have a bad outcome. So that's a very important concept to bear in mind. What we are learning here is to make a good decision. But having a good decision does not necessarily guarantee to have a good outcome. So the key feature for decision analysis is the existence of uncertainty. So I want to talk about the types of decision-making environment we have. That will give you a roadmap on what we're going to talk about in this module. Well, the first type of decision is the one that you make decisions under certainty, which means that the decision maker knows with certainty the consequences of every alternative or decision choice. This is not an interesting one. You know what's going to happen, so you know what is the best thing to do. That's not what we're going to talk about. Second type of situation is where you make decision under uncertainty. In this case, the decision maker does not know the probabilities of possible outcomes. There's uncertainty, but you do not know the probabilities associated with each possible outcomes. Third type is decision making under risk. This is a case where you have uncertainty and you also know the probabilities of each possible outcomes. We're going to focus on type 2 and type 3 in this module. We're going to start with type 2 and then we'll move on to type 3. 